Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord. There will be a CWL general meeting in the gathering room next Sunday following the 12 noon Mass. All members are invited to attend. All parishioners are invited to the gathering room following the Mass today to enjoy a cupcake with the children's ministry as they celebrate the solemnity of Mother Mary. Catechism classes for private, home, or public schools will begin this week for students in grade 2 and grade 8. Please call the parish office to register. Our celebrant today is Father Bill. Please stand and join our processional hymn. Sing of the King of Kings Who made himself poor See the mystery and the majesty The Creator is born Oh, the Maker became a man Let us sing what the angels say Glory to God in the highest Glory to God in the our hope has appeared, God has drawn near, glory to God alone. See the one who spans the heavens with his hand, with fingers so small. See the babe so poor, all of heaven adores, he's the ruler of all. Let us worship our humble King, adoration we humbly bring. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. Our hope is a peer, God is John Good morning and welcome. Good morning. What a pleasure to see all of you today. We celebrate with others of Christian faiths Christmas. We call it in the Catholic Church sometimes small Christmas, but for the Oriental peoples, for people of uh, Coptic, of Orthodox, of Eastern Catholic faiths like the Ukrainian Catholics, Cyril Malabars, Malabars, Melkite. It is their Christmas today. So we keep them in our prayers that we may be united in faith in Jesus Christ. We also remember during our prayers, Tony Passero and his brother Vito Passero who died on Thursday past. Uh, Marissa Alfieri and Don Love. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for their liturgy. How are you? Okay? Everything good? I'm going to be seeing you after Mass this morning because there are some special things that you're going to be doing, and then we're going to have a chance maybe to eat together. Did you notice anything different at the crash this morning at the manger scene? Do you see anything different? Do you see any added people? We see Mary and Joseph and we see Jesus. Who else do we see? We see the wise men. And today in the time of Jesus, this was the day that the wise men came to visit Jesus. 
And so we remember that very special day. And you and your liturgist, I think, are going to talk about that, okay? So I'm going to ask you to bow your head and ask God to bless you. May Almighty God bless you, children, not the adults. The adults will get blessed later, okay? May Almighty God bless the children, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please go with your liturgist. Okay. Okay, that has to stop. I'm going to be using penitential rite number two. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and ask God to forgive us. Your first response, for we have sinned against you. Have mercy on us, O Lord. The next response, and grant us your salvation. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epa. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery has not been known to humankind, as it has now been revealed by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Know, dear brothers and sisters, that as we have rejoiced at the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, so by leave of God's mercy, we announce to you also the joy of the resurrection, who is our Savior. On the day of 14 February, will fall Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of the fast 
of the most sacred Lenten season. On the day, March 31st, you will celebrate with joy Easter Day, the Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the twelfth day of May will be the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the nineteenth day of May, the Feast of Pentecost. On the second day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. On the first day of December, the first Sunday of Advent, the Advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Don't tell me that you don't know when the feasts are this year. <laughs> we come together today on a day when a pagan group of people examining the stars at the time of Jesus' birth saw in their skies a sign given by God that they believed that a new Jewish king had been born. These astrologers, we refer to as magi, looking up to the heavens, thought, a new king is born, we must go and find this king, because it's very rare that God would communicate to us, a new king is born, and so we must go and adore this king. So it was a joy, it was a, a journey of joy that they were making to find the baby king. And as we all know, in, because we live in a kingdom of sorts, when there are new royal children, we in Canada sometimes celebrate it, sometimes we ignore it, but there is the idea that a new birth is always a sign of joy. When you hear a baby is born, do you run away? Do you go to other places? Do you sort of hide? No, you normally go and see the baby. And I have a great niece next week who will be celebrating her second birthday, and I'm running over to see her until she gets her hands on the chocolate cake, and then I'm gonna sort of avoid her for a while until mom wa wa washes her hands. But babies are signs of joy. And babies sometimes are a sign of peace. And so these wise men set out following this star. And not only following the star, but they travel for quite a long while. And if you were told that a king of a country had a child, a new baby, where would you go if you were visiting that country? to the palace where the king lives. So where do the three kings go? To the palace. What do they find? King Herod doesn't know anything about this kid. <laughs> Imagine their surprise. I mean, they've been following this star for quite a while. And we think at least two years. And they have all their treasures with them, but they don't give it to Herod. And when they ask Herod, where is this child who has been born? Herod doesn't know. And Herod doesn't know because Herod is not a Jewish king. He was put there by the Romans, and he was in charge of two cities. That's why they call him Herod the Tetrarch. Tetra is usually three. He had a hold a little bit on a third city, but his kingdom was only three cities. So he has to go to his astronomers, he has to go to his people and say, where is this king supposed to be born? Now, if you're 
if you've traveled two years to find a king and the king of that country doesn't know where the king is supposed to be born, what does that tell you? That he's only about himself, okay? Then Herod finds out and he says, well, he's to be born in Bethlehem. Oh, by the way, it's only about four miles down the road. Now, the wise men are setting out. Who do you think should accompany the wise men to see this new baby? I would think so. What does Herod say? Go diligently and search for the child. When you found him, come and tell me and I'll go and give him homage. What do you think the wise men are thinking in their mind? There's something fishy here, if they said that in Jewish times, okay? There's something not quite right about this situation. But anyway, they don't fight with the king. They leave, and they follow the star again. Have you noticed something in this biblical account? They follow a star. The star is leading them. Did you pick that up? And it suddenly appears and disappears because when he goes into Jerusalem, I would think Herod would say, which star are you looking at? But we don't see that at all in any of the biblical account. So the wise men eventually arrive at the place where Jesus and Mary are. I find it interesting that Joseph is left out of the account but I'm not surprised. Joseph will appear in the next few chapters. So we know Joseph is still alive in case some of you have thought, well, maybe Joseph died. No, uh, God will tell Joseph in a dream to fly into Egypt because Herod is going to kill this child. Okay? So they come in and they open up their treasures. They've been traveling with years with treasures for a king. So if you're visiting a king, what is the first thing you're going to present as a treasure? Gold. And what does gold represent? Well, it represents that this child is going to be the leader of his people. But these people have gone in faith for years to find this child following a star. And it's also an incredible journey that talks about faith. So it raises faith in God who speaks to us, sometimes through the stars, sometimes through dreams, sometimes through miracles that happen around us that we call coincidence. Have you ever experienced God in your life? I can, I can tell you, as a priest, I've seen God so many different ways who acts in my life, and people would say, oh, Father, that's an experience. Uh, that's a coincidence. And many times God blesses our world but we just call it a coincidence, or isn't it a pleasant happening? But for these wise men, it was a gift of faith. You've come here today. You've come with your gold, your life. Do you have an increase in faith? How do you live your faith in God every day in the things that you see and experience, good and bad, God speaks to us. What a beautiful gift, the gift of faith. The next gift, because this is whom the shepherds thought might be a king, but a heavenly king, is frankincense. And when they pull out the frankincense and offer it to Christ, they adore Christ as God. Because frankincense is the gift of God. It's that smelly smoke that goes heavenward 
and brings our prayers before God. How often in your life do you take time to adore God? It's a beautiful gift that only you can give to God from your heart. So I've given from my riches, I've given from my heart. And then the last gift that they give is myrrh. And myrrh is a rather bizarre gift to give to a baby. It's bizarre because it's for burial. And the Jewish custom was when somebody important was being buried, they would put myrrh in the tomb near the body. And the idea of myrrh is myrrh is very bitter. And so it would remove a lot of the stench of death. They've come to, in faith before the Lord, they've come in adoration of the Lord, they come in preparation for burial of the Lord. But we know that when the Lord is buried, there is a resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And so these people come not only with faith and adoration, they come with the expectation that when they leave, they are going to talk about this baby to everyone they meet. Because having finally met the king, they are filled with joy. And in the Greek translations, the words for joy are 11 syllables long. I can't even think of an 11-syllable word right now that I could give you as an example. But it expresses ecstasy, extreme joy. They found the baby they've been looking for. They've done what they've come to do, worship and adore the baby, and now they're going to leave this place, return home, and tell the whole world what they found. Did you come with extreme joy today? Are you ready to go home and tell the whole world what you found? I remember saying to you a few months ago or to some of the people a few months ago, when we come to Mass, the Mass should radically change us. Every Mass we come to should change us so that we grow closer to God. You've come. You've come to worship God. You've come to adore God. Will you go and tell the world about God? Or will you return to a world that says to you, ah, oh, it's coincidence. That depends on you. Do you talk about your relationship with God? Do you express your joy in God? And are you filled with joy because you have come to be with God and with God's people? Together, let us say the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our gracious God hears our every cry, we present our needs, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. That all members of the church may be faithful disciples of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. That all those seeking salvation may find and stay with the Messiah, the Anointed One. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. For Christians making spiritual retreats, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. Let us pray for those who are sick or housebound, especially Kelly Kovacs, Micheline, Dillian Kirby, Jim Reynolds, Anthony Unelli. May they experience the healing power of your love in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. us. May all who have died in Christ enjoy his eternal banquet in heaven, especially Margaret Morin, Elizabeth Dickout, Aggie Ardell, Angelo Mocchia, Vito Pissero. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. We also pray for Tony Pissero, Marisa Alfieri, and Don Love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. us. Heavenly Father, you call us as your disciples to adore, worship, and spread the good news of your salvation. Hear our cry for the grace of a response. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. I am going to be using Eucharistic prayer number one. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in your mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, those who are living. Remember all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day 
on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Bless Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks and praise, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as much you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask to Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching and at the Savior's command we dare to say By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for serving. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen.
for those at home who are watching virtually and who would love to receive communion but cannot, we make a spiritual communion. <coughs> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good St. Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. One short announcement. The Christmas season uh, finishes tomorrow, 
after the feast of the baptism of the Lord. When you come to church next week, it will be the season of ordinary time in the church. Ordinary time means we are doing things in its natural sequence when we are listening to the word of God from the Gospel of Mark. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you for bringing your children to church. Thank you for your presence this morning. Have a really great week. Will live for